Horizon TV for health uh, talks and all for the benefits of the Ummah. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amani juu yako mtazamaji. Wanakwetu wanatambua kama Maria Mwacharo. Unatizama the Sabbath show. mtazamaji shukran sana kwa kuendelea kutegia the premier islamic tv station horizon tv kumbuka tunakujia kutoka katikati mwajiji na nairobi na iwapo leo ni holiday basi hapa tunasema hapa kazi tu tunaendelea kuangazia masuala yako ya afya shukran sana kwa kuendelea kutegia unaungana nami katika kitengo cha pili cha the sabah show wakati tunangazia masuala yako ya afya and today we'll be taking a look at cardiovascular diseases and with me in studio i'm not alone i have me with me a very prominent dr prim for not he's from Karen Hospital and Matthew he is well known <laughs> and celebrated for having performed over 15,000 successful heart surgeries in his career and here in Kenya alone more than 250 and he's actually told me here that immediately after this program he has another heart surgery so that's counting to do after this program thank you very much for gracing our show sure. remember according to statistics and according to WHO 17.9 million people die from heart conditions every year and that is why we're here to actually um take a look at today's program and we'd like to highlight some of the cardiovascular diseases what causes them and other diseases that actually you know relate to cardiovascular diseases thank you very much dr for Pleasure. coming welcome Pleasure. to our show thank you let's begin with the basics yeah many of us imagine that we live breathe walk and we can be able to do these things because of the heart what does the heart do for us dr yes you know heart is one organ in our body which has been described by poets and you know it has been emotionally connected valentine's day it is the heart again <laughs> yeah. so it is one organ in the body which has been associated with so many things mm -hmm. not any other organ only the heart yes functionally heart and lungs as you know we have got two lungs mm -hmm. they work together okay it's like one unit functionally but they are two organs but functionally they work as one organ mm -hmm. and as you know it is inside a we can call it as a trunk inside the chest mm -hmm. it's a chest cavity so mm -hmm. it's protected the god has created in such a way that it is protected by a chest cavity it is inside it heart is nothing but a muscle it is a muscle which is not under, under our control mm -hmm. it starts functioning the moment the child is born and it works till you are dead So it's so a after you're born that's when your heart starts functioning yes, or Yes yes So it's inside your mother's womb you can, your heart it, it is working okay. that is what you know So it's a hard working muscle and it works relentlessly mm -hmm. So um so it is the main function of the heart is to pump blood throughout your body So mm -hmm. if you look at this is a model of the heart yeah. So as we have studied in school mm -hmm. heart has got a right side left side yes. it has got four chambers if you open it up So there are four chains the two on the right side two on the left side Now the right side of the heart receives the impure blood mm -hmm. which has less oxygen from throughout the body so there is a big vein here it is called inferior vena cava or doctors say IVC mm -hmm. and there is one on the top it is called the superior vena cava mm -hmm. which is the blue one yeah. which brings the impure blood from the head and the arm upper part of the body okay. so it comes to the right upper chamber goes down to the right lower chamber then it is pumped into the uh, pulmonary artery which is this one mm -hmm. and it takes uh, the blood to the lungs mm -hmm. whereby it is being oxygenated then it comes back to the left side left upper chamber left lower chamber and it is pumped throughout the body through the main artery called aorta mm -hmm. and that's about so right side basically deals with the impure blood the left side deals with the pure, pure blood. blood yeah oxygenated and the oxygenation blood. happens in the lung so in this is what lungs. is happening okay. so it's a, it's a hard working organ it works it's not under your control mm -hmm. even though there are certain changes happens when you are emotionally upset when you are tie uh, when you are uh, angry or whatever it is you know when you're or excited. you are yeah, excited it's called fight or flight oh yes yes yeah, i've heard of that yes so when and there is a fight or when there is a flight you know it gets excited the rate <laughs> goes up so it's being controlled no it's not in your control 
it's also some hormonal things you know mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. you are emotionally upset or whatever yes. it is. so mm -hmm. That is how it is. Okay. And Dr. Ray, some people are usually born with some heart conditions. Therefore, I imagine that there are types or categories of heart diseases. Kindly enlighten us. Yeah. You know, it is estimated that in Kenya, less than 18 years, about 200,000 people, less than 18 years, mm -hmm. are having heart problem. That's estimate. It's, it may not be the accurate, but almost accurate. Okay. So this is a statistics, I think, about two years back. Mm -hmm. What they have told you that in among these 200,000, half of them have what is known as a uh, hole in the heart. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, you know, different type of holes. So see, hole can be between the two upper chambers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be between the lower chamber. The lower chamber is called VSD, ventricular septal defect. Mm -hmm. The upper one is called ASD. And of course, there are many times, sometimes you must have seen what is heard what is called as a blue baby syndrome, where the child say that when sh the child runs around, becomes bluish in color. Ah. That's because, yeah, that's because, again, it's a, it's called tetralogy of fallow. There are four defects inside the heart. Okay. Which, uh, incidentally, we did a few cases in Karen successfully. Uh, so, we have to correct everything to make the child back to normal stage. Or, in fact, we did two for adults, 30, mm -hmm. 32 year old patients came, we fixed it and And they them. lived with this all their life? Yes, they did not know that yes, this is actually... Yes, exactly. Okay. They were knowing that they are getting tired, but somehow they pushed the envelope, you know. Okay, yeah. So they came and fixed it. So that's called... So, so on and so forth. There's, there can be multiple problems inside the heart. Mm -hmm. So as a doctor, we have to identify it, see what can be done, and fix it, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So the other half, so this is one half. The other half has got most of these 18-year-old, less than 18-year-old children, mm -hmm. they have what is known as rheumatic heart disease. Yes. Very prevalent in Kenya and this part of the world. Mm -hmm. It was there in India also. But I think with the campaign and awareness, things are slowly getting better. Mm -hmm. So I think Kenya will also reach there. And it what is, is rheumatic heart disease? So this mm -hmm. is a disease that happens because of the infection of a bug or a bacteria called streptococcus. Oh, yes. See, so yes, this yes. is what children get when they are small. You know, they get throat pain, mm -hmm. fever some joint pains. So if it is not properly treated at that stage, mm -hmm. it slowly, you know, keeps on coming back, you know. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that as typically described in the book, it licks the joint but bites the heart. That's ah, what the book says. Yeah. What it says is that it keeps on affecting the child. And if you don't take proper care, you try to push, you know, give some local uh, unauthorized treatments, mm -hmm. After some time, it goes off. Mm -hmm. And when the child becomes 20s and 30s, slowly you find the child has got heart problem. Mm -hmm. What happens is bacteria goes and sits on the valve. As you know, there are four valves inside the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, the right side, you have the tricuspid valve. This is the valve between the right upper chamber and lower chamber. Mm -hmm. And there's a valve right at the starting of the pulmonary artery. We take the blood to the lung. Mm -hmm. And on the left side, there's a valve between the left upper chamber and lower chamber called the mitral valve. Mm -hmm. And then there's a valve right at the beginning of the iota which takes the oxygen blood. See these valves are like you know like the door in your house. Yes. It is supposed to open in one direction. Mm -hmm. What happens when they get defective either it can become narrow or sometimes it doesn't close well. It flops up and down. So okay, blood yes. starts shunting up and down. Ah. So in rheumatic heart disease what happens is that these children who are not treated properly mm -hmm. when they become in the second or third decade you find that they come up with heart problem. Mm -hmm. So now you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there are some latest treatments have come, but by and large, they eventually land up in replacing the valve because mm -hmm. the valve is so defective, yeah. you have to take it off and put some artificial mm -hmm. valve. And this is actually the danger of self-medication, yes. you know, and yes. I, I, I remember when I was speaking uh, about this, when I was doing my research and I came to the hospital and I spoke to uh, Miss Grace, she actually, uh, and you know, told us that the problem, many pr there's, there's a very big problem with our parents. You know, you get a common cold, you get flu, and they want to treat it on their own. They That's take true. ginger, yeah. onions here, garlic there, yeah. cinnamon here, and then it's gone. But then after some time, it actually affects your heart. Nani muhimu sana kwa kwewe mzazi wapo na mtoto. Hii mafua mafua all the time. Usi treat mwenyewe. Nenda spitali, nenda peleka mtoto. Manake magonjo wa moyo huja baada ya mda. Daktari, what are some of the conditions that someone can be born with, heart conditions that someone yes. can actually be born with. Yes. You know, that's called congenital heart disease. Uh -huh. That is, you're born with the problem. The child is born with the problem. It usually happens. It happens all over the world. But by proper care, proper medication, proper advice from the doctors, you can reduce the number of problems okay. like this. For example, if the mother is pregnant, mm -hmm. you know, it is in the first three months, 
the it is the it is in the first three months the child will have the development of the organs you know organogenesis in doctor's term what do you say mm -hmm. the organs of the child is born i mean developed during the first three months and that's a crucial part mm -hmm. and it is during these three months if the mother gets some infection for example measles smallpox chickenpox you know something like that yes it can affect the child in the womb mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. uh, so i think they have to be very careful they should not do any self medication without a proper doctor's mm -hmm. advice mm -hmm. what to take and what not to take yeah and also you know in, uh, i'm not sure about here you know some of the ladies they go taking drugs or you know smoking drinking all those things indirectly affects the child in the womb okay so i think these are the uh, the the, the um, factors the mother has to be careful about mm -hmm. and uh, in that way we can reduce the 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 problem the child will have when the child is born yeah and this is also important i remember i just before this particular episode i actually did uh, infant care and before yes. that i actually did gestation you know yes. the the period yes. it's very important there's so many things to take into account to yes. actually take um, note and uh, importance into the antenatal and prenatal yes. care na ni vile vile nilivyoweza kuzungumza na kina dada zangu na mama zangu nikawaambia kwamba ni muhimu kwa wewe kwenda kwa daktari kila mara hususan unapokuwa mjamzito kwenda kuangaliwa maana ke daktari amesema in the first 3 4 <coughs> months ndio pale mtoto anaweza ku develop zile organs zake kwa hiyo inabidi kwa wewe chukua muhimu wa kwenda kwa daktari kwenda kuangaliwa na mtoto wako anapopata mafua kikohozi hapa na pale usitreat mwenyewe sijui kitunguu saumu au kitunguu maji au koroga koroga kunywa baada ya siku mbili imeisha lakini baada ya miaka kumbe ni ugonjwa wa moyo alafu sasa unafikia pale ambapo unahitajika kufanywa upasuaji na tunajua sote kwamba upasuaji una cost pesa nyingi sana na tutakuja kuzungumzia hayo uh, doctor before we take a break yes what are some of the most common heart conditions that you've seen in patients especially here in Kenya in Kenya most of my practice i would say 50 to 60% is rheumatic heart disease mm -hmm. changing of valves sometimes i can repair you know it's like having your shoe yeah if it is not that bad we can repair it mm -hmm. but if it is really bad you have to change it yes. so we can do re valve repair surgeries uh, when the valve is not that bad you know mm -hmm. or if the valve is really bad then we have to do what is known as valve replacement mm -hmm. now the new technology has come it's called balloon mitral uh, valve opening can be done it's called balloon mitral valvuloplasty by which without surgery we put a small tube inside the heart okay. and using a balloon we open it up oh we have started doing in karen because one of the problem i we find here is that availability of you know all these fancy gadgets yes uh, availability of disposables because many of them they come from abroad mm -hmm. so you know it's not available just like that you know you want yes. something they say oh you got to wait for two weeks three mm -hmm. weeks you know it has mm -hmm. to come from netherlands you know the usual problem yes so now that has we have started that it's called balloon mitral bmv or balloon mitral valvuloplasty for mitral valve pulmonary you know different type of valves mm -hmm. surgery is available uh, so that is 50% of my practice okay. the other i would say 20 to 30% is i do a lot of bypass surgery which i don't think in uh, east africa not much of is going on um, you know suppose because of cholesterol problem which mm -hmm. we will discuss about it yes when you eat a lot of junk food and yes. you know, a lot of cholesterol and fat <laughs> get into your blood pizza pizza chicken chicken <laughs> <laughs> yes so it get deposited in the blood vessel and it causes blockage okay. whereby you know you must have heard people having heart attack going yes. to hospital mm -hmm. you know so when there is a block we can do what is known as a bypass surgery and that also can help so i do a lot of bypass surgeries mm -hmm. in fact yesterday i did one tomorrow i'm going to do another one so uh, i do what is known as beating heart surgery i don't stop the heart yes. you see yes. see it's like repairing the car you are repairing the car when the car is running, it's running. yes <laughs> there's a benefit in this the benefit is that the patient recovers faster ah. you can do very sick patients especially with kidney problem and uh, they go home in 5 to 7 days time and they are back on their normal activity in 2 months time uh, when you stop the heart as you know when you stop the heart the function of the heart and the lung is given to a machine called bypass machine mm -hmm. so it has got its own problem you know the patient recovers faster uh, later the anesthesia time is more there can be some bleeding problems in you know, all sort so on and so forth yes. so i try to do most of the cases on beating heart surgery because mm -hmm. it's good for the patient good for the hospital but not good for, good for the doctor <laughs> because <laughs> no only you have to be specially trained for that what okay. that's what i want to tell you okay. because you are repairing on an organ which is moving yes so you have oh, to yes, do it yes, yes. because yes. think of a thing it's moving and you are trying to do very 
mind you, you are doing a surgery on a two millimeter vessel, so small that you need some mag magnifying glasses to do the surgery. Yeah. So you have to be trained to do this beating heart surgery. Mm -hmm. So many people don't do it, but it is good for the patient, mm -hmm. good for the hospital. Patient goes home early, gets back to his normal life early. So I think he becomes a, uh, you know, a, a good citizen, a um, back to his normal activity mm -hmm. within a short period of time. Mm. That is actually great. Uh, I think that's now a challenge to our doctors <laughs> out there to actually get training to yes. do the beating heart surgeries, just like Dr. Prim here. Yeah. He's actually yeah, very well known and actually celebrated out there for being one, if not the only one in Kenya, who actually does beating heart surgeries. I think, so. I think probably the whole of East Africa. I think. The whole of East I'm not, Africa. I'm maybe subject to correction, but to my knowledge. Okay, to his knowledge, he's the only cardiovascular surgeon who actually does beating heart surgeries. I think that's a challenge, especially to our doctors out there. It is possible, it can be done, and it is good for the patient. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll delve more into heart cardiovascular diseases. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Amani juu yako mtazamaji nitakuwa so, natambua yeah. kama no, Maria Mwacharo unatizama the sabah show Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. My name is Dr. Swale Brekmiswa. I work at Aga Khan Hospital Mombasa. I also operate in other hospitals in Mombasa. Uh, kindly keep watching Horizon TV for health uh, talks and all for the benefits of the Ummah. Walk with us as we tell you the stories of our society. Wengine atavaa mtandio kichwani utafikiri ni kijihanka chief. Enzi za wakati wa kusema ati alisema akasisitiza akihutubia na habari enzi hizo hazipo tena. Ukuchimbua na kuna kilima tukio kwa undani. We want to create current awareness. Ranging from adventure, <coughs> human interest and inspirational stories. Ili kuweza kukuelimisha, kukuburudisha na kukubumbuisha. Words have been said, but now it is time to lay the foundation that will impact the world. Terrorism is terrorism. No matter who is behind the trigger. The Messenger of Allah said, Whoever says when the morning comes, Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami dina wa bi muhammadin nabiya meaning i am pleased with allah as the lord and with islam as a religion and with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a prophet then i am the guarantor that i will take him by his hand until i put him into jannah Are you finding difficulty to find us on Azam Decoders? Rescan your Azam Decoders and find us on channel 008. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Abu Najma with kids. We learn Quran. We learn Quran. We learn Quran. We learn Quran. We learn Hadith. We learn Hadith. We learn Hadith. Abu Najma with kids. 
Wilang Quran, Wilang Quran, Wilang Quran, Wilang Quran, Wilang Hadis. Healthy Thursday is not just about diseases. It's about food, lifestyle, milestones in the medical practitioner's field, especially in our Muslim Ummah, and more so, your health. Discover breakthroughs and milestones in the medical field. Learn how to manage diseases. Oh, that was not painful. Join the discussion. Make better decisions on your meal plans. Improve your lifestyle. All the doctors who are there were tired of working in maternity and uh, taking care of women. And they say, you are the new kid on the block. We are leaving this department to you. Healthy Thursday is about you, about your family, your lifestyle. So keep it locked Horizon TV on Healthy Thursday with me, Maria Mwacharo. My name is Dr. Swale Brekmiswa. I work at Agakan Hospital Mombasa. I also operate in other hospitals in Mombasa. Uh, kindly keep watching Horizon TV for health uh, talks and all for the benefits of the Ummah. Horizon TV. The beacon for the nation. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amani juu yako mtazamaji. Wanakwetu wanatambua kama Mariam Wacharo. Unatizama the Sabbath show. Namshukran sana mtazamaji kwa kuendelea kutazama uh, the Premier Islamic TV station Horizon TV. Uh, bila shaka tunaendelea na kuangazia masuala ya magonjwa ya moyo. Na before we went for the break, we were actually saying that when you have a problem, kindly go to the doctors and get yourself checked. You get checked, if you are safe, then that is well and good. But if you're not, a problem can actually be dealt with on its earlier stages. So do not take a chance and self-medicate. Self-medicate ni ile kwamba umekuwa na homa, umekuwa na flu, manake amesema hii kuna kuna nini hiyo bacteria inaitwa st uh, streptococcus huwa inashuka inakwenda kwenye moyo na inakwenda kuharibu zile valves ambazo huwa ndio milango ya kupitisha damu inakwenda inaharibu kwa hiyo unapokuwa na mafua mafua vikozi vikozi hivi ni hiyo streptococcus nenda hospitali ukaangaliwe pata dawa ambazo ni sahihi kwa ugonjwa wako isiwe unaweka weka unakaa unakunywa kunywa matangawizi baadaye unapata ugonjwa wa moyo na kuna swali limeza kuingia kutoka kwa one of our viewers, uh, uh, Dadangu Pale Fatma Mustafa, you say that you have a baby who's one and a half years old, and since 12 months she's had uh, chest problems, and every time you go to the hospital, unambio kwamba ni infection, infection. Advice from the doctor here to Meza Kumuliza, there's a medical camp that is happening on Saturday uh, with Karen Hospital and Dr. Atakua Pale. The current hospital, it is partnering with the Medical Alliance Center. It is happening in Isili, Nairobi, and it's going to be at the Alliance Medical Center, Medina Building, opposite Isili. The doctor has said, please come to that camp. He will take a look at uh, the baby and he will tell you if maybe there's a problem or there is not. Okay, I am heading on. Kumbuka mtazamaji unaweza kutuma maswali yako kupitia kwenye SMS line yetu ambayo iko kwenye screen yako you can also give us a call directly on studio and ask any questions that you have about heart diseases especially I'm looking forward to patients of diabetes and hypertension I'm sure you have so many questions so tafadhali feel free call our lines are open or even send us a text message or you can also get us on our social media platforms on Facebook Instagram and Twitter at Horizon TV Kenya or chat with me directly on my Facebook at Mariam Kasim heading on Dr. what are the causes of heart diseases see there is no if you ask me personally there is no one cause uh -huh. there are multiple risk factors okay for example if suppose if suppose someone has got uh, diabetes uh -huh. it's a risk factor okay. blood pressure hypertension is a risk factor family history is a risk factor uh -huh. 
lot of stress is a risk factor. You know? Lot of stress? Yes, that's okay. also. So there are multiple reasons. There is no one reason. So it's like 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. So it keeps on adding. Mm -hmm, yeah. So if you have multiple risk factors, you are in real, you know, dire straits. Mm -hmm. uh, so the most important thing is that if you have a risk factor, try to fix them so that you don't get into trouble. Okay. There's a question that has just come in on my Facebook here. Somebody is actually asking me, if you have uh, maybe a chest condition, say asthma or bronchitis, are you prone to any heart disease? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No, no. it's entirely different. Asthma is, you know, it's because of the spasm of the muscles of the lung. Yes. Uh, it has nothing to do with the heart. But all these lungs, as I told you previously, yes. the heart and the lung, they work as one unit functionally. Mm -hmm. So if someone has got a, say, called, uh, chronic bronchitis, Yes. because of smoking or whatever it may be mm -hmm. and if it is not properly treated and it goes to a next phase called emphysema you know mm -hmm. we call it COPD chronic obstructive lung disease okay. or pulmonary disease COPD mm -hmm. when advanced lung diseases can cause heart problem indirectly mm -hmm. because when the heart when the lung problem becomes more the pressure inside the blood vessels in the lung is tend to be higher mm -hmm. when that is there it can indirectly affect the heart Okay. Not directly, but indirectly. So okay. many times we find that patient with advanced lung problem coming with some heart failure features. Mm -hmm. It's not because the heart has got a problem. It's basically because the lung has a problem. So the heart is indirectly affected. Mm -hmm. It can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, kwa hiyo, Dr. Yameza kusema tu kwamba hakuna sababu moja ambayo huweza kusababisha ugonjwa moyo. Iwapo wewe unasukari, una pressure, basi wewe uko at risk, hizi ni risk factors za kuweza kupata ugonjwa moyo. Kwa hiyo, take concern. Uh, what are the symptoms that may tell you that I'm actually developing a heart problem? As you know that we all have heart. Yes. And we don't realize that the heart is beating. So yes, someone realizes that the heart is beating, that's a warning sign. There's something is wrong. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that, because, you know, of course, you feel when you run or climb up the stairs, you feel the heart is thumping. Yes. But otherwise, when you sit idle at home, you should not feel it. Okay. So, if you start feeling the heart is racing, so that means there is a... So, the heart rate can go up or it can come down. Both are problems mm -hmm. which has to be checked. But there are certain professional athletes with low heart rate, which okay. is physiological, you know. Mm -hmm. So, that's not a disease. But... When the heart rates remain, of course, when you climb up the stairs, run after Manta 2, your heart rate may go up. That's yes. a different thing. That's yes. physiological. Mm -hmm. But it comes down. But if it remains high persistently, then you got to get checked. Mm -hmm. Why the heart rate is high? Mm -hmm. Am I missing something? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Any other conditions? Yes. And also, as, as I told you, heart and lung uh, works as one unit. Mm -hmm. uh, when there is a heart problem, one of the common signs is that patient says, I am feeling breathless. You know, when I climb stairs, I can't climb. I have to wait and then climb, you know. Oh. So when my own colleagues of my own age, they mm -hmm. run and go, I can't do it. I have to climb one stairs, wait for two, say, say two couple of seconds, then go. So that's, that shows that there is some problem. Mm -hmm. So breathing problem, mm -hmm. or breathlessness, mm -hmm. then chest pain. When they say that when I walk for some time, I get left-sided chest pain. Sometimes mm -hmm. the pain is coming to the left, left hand or back. That shows, again, there is a problem. Okay. Especially when there is a block in the arteries. I told you about cholesterol and all those. So, chest pain when you exert. Breathing problem when you exert. Or palpitation or thumping of the heart mm -hmm. when you walk around. Mm -hmm. All could be reasons. To okay. say that, all right, there is something wrong. Kawaida watu nauliza, of course, sababu ambazo husababisha magonjwa moyo, lakini vile vile kuna moja pia meza kuuliza na ndio hilo swali limeza kujibiwa. Wapo unahisi pumzi zina kukatikia gafla kwa gafla basi jua kwa mba pengine kuna tatizo la ugonjwa moyo pale unaweza kupata. Lama pengine kama wewe kijana kama maria muacharo alafu unapanda ngazi mbili tatu unahisi huwezi tena unasubiri sekunde mbili tatu hivi ndo uweze kuendelea kupanda ngazi basi nenda kaangaliwe na daktari na vile vile pia ameza kusema kuhisi moyo wako ukipiga wa si, si jambo la kawaida ni jambo la kawaida kama pengine unakimbia ndiyo umepanda ngazi haraka ndiyo utahisi moyo wako unapiga lakini umeketi tu hivi hufanyi lolote ya unakula ile ice cream yako alafu unahisi moyo wako unapiga then that is a telltale sign that you're actually developing a heart disease I have a question here doctor somebody yes. has said that I am a diver yes. I usually dive very deep into the ocean and I do not go with any gear I just go and I fish and uh, I get crustaceans for my home. I live in an island. Uh, might I be exposing my heart to any possible heart conditions? 
not necessarily but you know if it looks like he is a professional diver mm -hmm. you know that's what he does every day mm -hmm. so many times it doesn't because they are used to it but people who are not used to it because you are t because he goes without any fancy gadgets so he just hold the breath and go down get it and come back so i don't think it is a real risk factor but if he develops you know suppose he if he can't hold the breath if he finds that he can't do the normal livelihood which he is doing then i think he should get checked okay and i have another question here also coming mm -hmm. uh he says I am on antidepressants. Yes. Sometimes I get very slowed heart rate mm -hmm. accompanied with a dizzy spell. Mm -hmm. Should I be concerned? Yes, of course. That means he has to be concerned. I think he has to be checked. Because when the heart rate is low, the pumping of the blood vessels blood to the system is low, so that is why he is getting the dizziness. So okay. we have to check it. There are two things in this. Is it the antidepressants causing this problem? Mm -hmm. Number 1, or is it a separate entity by itself? Okay. So we have to check him and find out whether it is the drugs which is causing this dizziness and you know uh, blackout mm -hmm. or does he have something else sitting inside him? Mm -hmm. And so I think he has to be checked. Okay. And uh, uh, th there's a lady also who's asking uh, if every time you get tonsillitis, 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 mm -hmm. is it also going to possibly expose you to any heart condition? That's what I mean to say. So we have to find out why this you know someone is getting tonsillitis repeatedly. has streptococcus the one which is the yes. culprit mm -hmm. has anything to do with it so what they do they do a swab culture of the mm -hmm. throat mm -hmm. find out whether there is a streptococcus infection mm -hmm. in a normal tonsillitis i think it has to be fixed if some if it is troubling her too much yeah you know you can do tonsillectomy that's one of the treatment they do it's it's a very simple surgery mm -hmm. or so basically she has to do a throat swab which a ENT surgeon does mm -hmm. find out what is the cause for this mm -hmm. and treat it accordingly okay and uh, there's another question also a, a lady is asking if uh, maybe you have a baby and all the time the baby has uh, sometimes you see your baby has sh is short of breath every now and then you know maybe he's breathing too fast and then all of a sudden it's okay and all of a sudden it's too slow and you get worried and then all of a sudden it picks up again uh, is does it mean that the baby is probably exposed to any heart condition not necessarily if the baby has got some lung infection which is very common you know especially school going children yes it can cause it can increase the heart rate mm -hmm. uh, it, they may have cough and sneeze and all sort of things mm -hmm. but not necessarily it can be a heart condition but if it is too much troubling to uh, troubling her re regarding the baby's health i think it's worthwhile getting it checked mm -hmm. because Now, now the science has improved. The technology has improved. The, we have qualified doctors. Mm -hmm. I am, a, I am sure, a good pediatric doctor, a child specialist can pick it up. Okay. I don't think it's a problem. Okay. You spoke about, uh, you know, uh, junk food, eating junk food, and 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 uh, eat causing heart problems or deposits of fat. What are some of these foods that people usually eat? Let's start with there first. Y yes. What are some of these foods that I can eat possibly? Is it the fries? Is it the pizza? Is it the Kentucky Fried Chicken that I always get? every other weekend what are some of these foods that can actually expose my heart to you know heart conditions you see anything in moderation is good yes let's make it like that uh -huh. <laughs> i know most of these junk foods are tasty you know we all indulge in it once in a while but think of a condition someone eats it almost every day or three times a day let's uh -huh. take it that way see cholesterol in moderation what happens is that when you take a lot of fat inside it gets into the blood basically after mm -hmm. digestion mm -hmm. and what happens is that it get deposited on the blood vessel mm -hmm. and slowly over a period of time it doesn't happen overnight over a period of time it get deposited and it causes causes the blockage of the blood vessel mm -hmm. think of a road block no traffic is going so when the when the cholesterol deposits and the blood vessel get blocked the muscle beyond that area is deprived of blood supply so what happens it it's just like you know you are hungry mm -hmm. you are feeling hunger because you take food yes. just like the muscle the hunger pain of the muscle is manifested as chest pain ah. so the patient will say when i walk around or when i climb stairs i get chest pain uh -huh. when i sit at home i don't get it so that means whenever he is exerting the muscle needs more blood yeah. but the blood can't go because of the cholesterol blockage yes so then he gets pain okay so this is called angina in doctor's term or it is called chest pain or exertional chest pain uh -huh. we can call it Okay. Now this is a warning sign the 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 mother nature is giving you 
but people do ignore it they say that oh you know it's only gas and you know mm. some muscle pain and they mm. go to pharmacies take something and goes around <laughs> now again they get the same thing yeah and ultimately what happens that is these are the patients who if you don't get treated the one which lands up in heart attack okay. where the muscle dies mm. you know the the hunger pain the pain mm-hmm. of the muscle is there whenever you exert and then you don't take care and ultimately when when it become too much that part of the muscle dies and that's a time the doctor say oh he developed a heart attack mm-hmm. there are changes in the ecg echo and all sort of test mm-hmm. so this is something which is preventable okay. keep to- properly taken care proper medication proper uh, consultation with the correct doctors can be avoided okay let's take a short break we'll be right back um tazamaji you can continue sending in your questions on our social media platforms and at the same time you can also give us a call on studio and ask any questions that you have about heart disease uh, definitely i'm receiving so many questions on my social media here on my facebook we'll be getting back to you shortly do not touch that dial Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amalla. I didn't know people had these many questions. Unatizama the subah show. My name is Dr. Swale Brekniswa. I work at Aga Khan Hospital Mombasa. I also operate in other hospitals in Mombasa. Uh, kindly keep watching Horizon TV for health uh, talks and all for the benefits of the umma. <laughs> Healthy Thursday is not just about diseases. It's about food, lifestyle, milestones in the medical practitioners field especially in our muslim ummah and more so your health discover breakthroughs and milestones in the medical field learn how to manage diseases oh, that was not join the discussion make better decisions on your meal plans improve your lifestyle all the doctors who are there were tired of working in maternity and uh, taking care of women and they say you are the new kid on the block we are leaving this department to you healthy thursday is about you about your family your lifestyle so keep it locked horizon tv on healthy thursday with me maria mwacharo My name is Dr. Swale Brekniswa. I work at Aga Khan Hospital Mombasa. I also operate in other hospitals in Mombasa. Uh, kindly keep watching Horizon TV for health uh, talks and all for the benefits of the ummah. Horizon TV the beacon for the nation Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Amani juu yako mtazamaji wanakwetu wanatambua kama Maryam Mwacharo unatizama the sobah show kumbuka unaweza kutupigia simu kututumia SMS na uweze kuuliza maswali yako kuhusiana na magonjwa ya moyo nimepata maswali mengi mengi sana endelea kutuma maswali yako dadangu uh, Fatma Mustafa natumai umeweza kupata jibu please make some point and uh, make a point rather and come to Isili on the medical camp that Karen Hospital is actually having uweze kuangaliwa mtoto na vile vile dadangu Saida natumai maswali yako yameweza kujibiwa as we continue daktari let me ask you Uh, diseases such as hypertension and diabetes as you have said they actually put a patient to risk of getting heart disease why is it so you know these diabetes and hypertension they can initiate this blockage of uh-huh. the blood vessels uh-huh. as i told you uh-huh. which leads them to heart attack uh-huh. so i think diabetes is one disease which can affect from head to toe 
any part of your body okay. in any way. Uh -huh. So I think diabetes, as you know, now the statistics shows that in Kenya, uh -huh. diabetes is on the rise. Yes. Hypertension is on the rise. Uh, all these are probably because there is a change in scenario. You know, previously it has been estimated that 50% of the hospital admission, any hospital uh -huh. in Kenya, if you go there, it is most of them are NCD, non-communicable diseases. Yes. Gone are the days. If you would have gone 20 or 30 years back, probably you find more malaria and mm. tuberculosis and mm. you know all sort of infection, infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. Now that has changed. So there is a change in scenario now. Maybe because the prosperity of the people are going up. Yes. Maybe there is a change in uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That so you find a lot of diabetes, hypertension, stroke, eye problem, trauma. You know. Yes. You, you, gone are the days where you find malaria and tuberculosis. <laughs> thing. So there is yeah. a change in disease profile. Mm -hmm. So people, you know, maybe because of the lifestyle, you know, people are do, doing less of activity outside. In fact, playing instead of playing football outside, they are playing football on the t on mm, the computer. FIFA, yeah. Yeah. So that's what. So uh, change in lifestyle now. The healthy lifestyle food of the Kenyans have changed. Now it is more of fried food and mm -hmm. junk food and mm -hmm. greasy food. So, and then of course, most of the uh, jobs have a lot of stress. You know, you have to perform. Otherwise, there is a lot of stress. The boss is screaming at you. You know, so all sort of things are there, which might not have been there previously mm -hmm. about 20 years back. So mm -hmm. the disease profile has changed. Okay. So the diabetes has come up. Hypertension has come up. A lot of stress is there. You know, you started smoking, drinking, you don't know, you know, so all sort of things have creeped in. Mm -hmm. So the whole disease profile has changed. So that's why you find a lot of all these, you know, heart problems or strokes, mm -hmm. you know, all sort of other issues have come. Yes. Mm. You've actually spoken about stroke and heart problems and uh, uh, we cannot uh, run away from the fact that, you know, there's uh, heart attacks and cardiac arrest. And I got a chance to meet your very good friend, as you've just told me, Dr. Saleh yes. uh, from uh, Mombasa when they had the medical camp. And he actually identified and uh, rather told us the difference uh, between the cardiac arrest and uh, heart attack. Let's take a look at that video, uh, Mr. Muhammad Shakombo there, my producer. Can we have that video, please? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have learned a lot about heart diseases, heart health, surgery, etc. Now we're going to make a differentiation between heart attack and cardiac arrest. And with me, I have Dr. Sole Karibu Sana. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, Dr. if I may ask right away, what is a heart attack? Okay, heart attack is uh, basically what it means that there's a sudden closure or sudden uh, blockage of blood flow okay. to the heart muscles. Okay. Okay, that a blood vessel has blocked for one reason or another and the blood is not reaching the muscles. Okay, so that is heart attack. Okay. Yes. And what about cardiac arrest? Cardiac arrest is when the heart ceases to contract, ceases to function. Okay. okay? So when you talk of heart attack, the heart is still pumping, mm -hmm. but certain part of the heart might not be pumping well because the blood supply to that part is not, is been compromised or has been blocked. blocked. But cardiac arrest is when the heart stops pumping completely. Mm. So heart attack is one of the causes of cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest. Yes. Okay. So the, the heart, uh, like blood, if does, it does not get to the muscle, that means the blockage may have been caused by uh, blood that has clotted maybe? And yeah, most of the time, the blockage is caused by a clot. Okay. And that clot probably has occurred in a place that is in the heart, in the vessel supplying the heart that is already narrowed. Now that narrowing of the, heart, of the, of the vessel could be caused by a condition that has been there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I'm talking of conditions like uh, hypertension, diabetes, mm -hmm. and uh, cholesterol, smoking. Mm -hmm. All these conditions might cause narrowing of that vessel. Mm -hmm. But on that particular day that you had a heart attack, that narrowing has, has been, I mean, there's been blockage of flow because of a thrombus. Mm -hmm. Probably there's been rupture of the vessel with clot formation that has prevented blood from flowing. Okay. Yeah. So if I may ask, what symptoms could you get as a person when you're, when you're, when you're experiencing heart attack? I mean, there are symptoms that are called classical symptoms. What uh, I describe as... Uh, there's a feeling of chest pain mm -hmm. and this pain is not localized where well, you can say it's here it's actually diffuse it's retrosternal it's behind the sternum and most patients with heart attack will not come pointing their finger but they'll come holding their chest because that type of pain 
is diffuse. Others will give you, and the classical thing is, like there's something heavy, there's a mountain sitting on the chest. That is preventing them probably from breathing, or sensation that something is sitting on my chest. And that pain could move to the neck or the jaw, or to move on the upper part of the arm. This is the classical presentation of heart attack. It might come with sweating, features what we call diaphoresis. They might come with vomiting sometimes, depending on which vessel is involved or something like that. So the main thing is chest pain, heaviness, and something very heavy sitting on the chest. It's a very abnormal, and most of the time patient will not be able to tolerate that. They will have to seek medical advice. Okay? But that's the classical presentation. The others who might come with heart attack with sudden death, they just collapse. And that has been a massive heart attack. Okay? Some will come because they're having difficulty breathing. Okay, and that's a heart attack, especially women, and especially diabetic. They tend to hide, they, do, they tend not to, to show the classical symptoms. The symptoms are more what you call a typical, not the typical ones. Breathlessness, or some bit of discomfort, or they just tell you, I don't feel all right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how do you prevent heart attacks? That's a very difficult question. Okay, I mean, uh, as I said, most of the patients, if you have to take 100 patients, 90 to 95 percent will have some form of other diseases oh. that has predisposed them to get heart attack. And one of them could be because they are having hypertension, they're having diabetes, they're smoking, or they have cholesterol, or they have lifestyle, they don't exercise at all, or they're obese, overweight, okay? All these are what we call risk factors to develop heart attack. So the way to prevent it is to go back to the drawing board and try to address this issues, the ones that I've mentioned in terms of uh, treat the blood pressure well, treat the diabetes well, maintain uh, an ideal weight, stop cigarette smoking, stop alcohol, excessive alcohol consumption, treat the cholesterol and uh, sedentary lifestyle avoidance, try to involve with exercise, okay, like walking, brisk walking, mm -hmm. and uh, be modest to your diet. So last question, Kabisa Daktari, how do you treat a heart attack? Heart attack is treated depending where it occurs. Some heart attack occur, occur at home, and people might not even be aware that a heart attack has taken place. They had had uh, some chest pain, difficulty in breathing, they persevere for some few days, and the heart attack is over. And probably some muscles will have been lost of the heart, but they still have some muscles that they can still keep them going. Okay. If you're in a place like uh, places where facilities are available, places like Nairobi, places like uh, Mombasa, Okay, where we have facilities like a cath lab, okay, and the patient has access, timely access to those equipments. They are taken to the cath lab, where we get what we call vascular access. We, go, we get access to the vessels, we swim to the vessels, and we put gadgets like wires and then stents and then even clot, we aspirate the clot, so that we can allow some flow to, to take place. For those who are not there, in such uh, hospitals with equipments, we have other options like giving them medication to dissolve, which you are actually the essence of this training, showing them how to use such medications to dissolve uh, the clot, okay. something called metallase. Mm -hmm. okay? We use this to dissolve the clot. Okay. Because at the end of the day, you want to dissolve the clot to attain flow of blood yeah. so that the heart can resume its work. Naam huyo alikuwa ni Dr. Swale pale tuliweza kukutana naye katika medical camp iliyoko Mombasa e, ambayo ilikuwa ni ya camp actually Kenya uh, Association of Medical Muslim uh, Professionals there Dr. Swale who's also he's a cardiologist and is also a very good friend of Dr. Prim here as he was telling me before we took the break. Um there's a question that has come in on my on on my uh WhatsApp and uh, there's a lady okay she has typed in Swahili and uh, she's saying that I am, I am not educated and uh, I do not understand a lot of the things, but I have a child who is now uh, 17 years old and he has a machine that is helping his heart pump. I think that's a pacemaker. What could, what could have caused this condition? Because I was not there. The father is the one who take, okay. So what, what could actually lead to someone getting a pacemaker now for the heart? Many types. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just putting it very simply. Mm -hmm. Usually pacemaker is inserted or put it in a person where you want it to increase the heart rate. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and you can, as you know, the rate can be controlled. Okay. So suppose you know the normal, normally it is between say 60 to 90. Probably this child must be having the heart rate of 30 or 35, okay. which is low, and that's a time you get dizziness, you know, blackout, and all sort of things. Mm -hmm. So probably the doctor must have put a pacemaker to increase the heart rate to the normal level. Possibly, okay. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So that must be the reason. But I think we'll have to evaluate him and find out why it was done. Okay. You know, okay. What so was the cause? Because so sometimes mm -hmm. by birth, heart rate can be less. Okay. That's called congenital heart block, you call it. We yeah. have done, in fact, the youngest child we have done in the whole of East Africa is ours. We have published in the paper, in the journal mm -hmm. for a three-year-old child. A you put a pace, old? Yeah. Wow. You put a pacemaker and child is fine, running okay. around. Okay. So sometimes mm -hmm. they do come with congenital heart block, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what is the issue, but we like to check it. Okay. So, Mama, very soon we're going to speak a medical about a medical camp that is happening on uh, this Saturday in Isili. Mama, please bring your child there. Doctor, will be there to take a look at him. Na aweze kuona o kunradhi manake ameza kuni text kwenye kiswahili. Mama, angu pale ambaye ameza kuuliza kusu ile machine ambayo ina msaidia mtoto wako kupiga moyo. Daktari atakuwa isili yumamosi hii tafadhali. Tafta mda uweze kufika na uje na mtoto wako huyo wa 17 years old ulivosema. Aweze kuangaliwa na daktari na ataweza kukuambia jeni kwa nini. Icho kidude ambacho kimewe kwa hapo cha kupiga moyo kipo hapo. Uh, eh, isili madina mulpale mamangu fika hapo. Uh, daktari as we come to the end let me just uh, pick a few comments here on our whatsapp. We have Brenda Habwe, Kamawira Ian. Isa Manga, uh, Mubiru, Ani, and I hear that there's a caller online. Hello, Horizon TV. Horizon TV, hello. Hello. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Maria. Naam, unaitua nani, dadangu, na unapiga kutoka api? Nini, nini, itu, uh, hold on. Naam, unaitua nani, dadangu, na itu, hold on. Naam, unaitua nani, dadangu, na itu, hold on. Hazrat, now we have the Punguza Saudi TV. I am going to visit him and we will be able to visit him. Sawa, I am my brother. I am from Gondjo. Eh, brother, you are from Gondjo? I am from Gondjo. I am from Gondjo. Moyo, heart. Okay, heart. Eh, eh. Mara nyingi ana kulal mara zile kama umma kaka kona kazi zile sana au raika na ida na wano tisa au zidaba mara nyingi kwa na inia kama mtu wa yote na umma ba kasa idio me ya ya moyo sasa kutoka almost for almost two to three years aliko na yuo gundi na haja wa yuzi zisosi because a kumbali sana kumudi sana so what you call that? Na na yana sema na yake ni ina uma sana. Mara mara na kula na wazi ongea pa kuna majasho kwa miliote. So I want to talk about that and also clear. So una una uliza swali gani dada ngo hazrat? Sasa nini mepote yote dada yote ya hiyo moyo ina uma mkono wa wazi dada tu ina uma mkono yote. Haya, shukran sana umesema kakako yuko North Eastern Matafadhali ukizungumza na team yangu huko nyuma Matafadhali eka namba yako Na tutaweza kukunganisha na daktari mweze kuzungumza Matafadhali usikate simu Pindi simu yako itakapokato kutoka hapa studio Endelea kuka kwenye line zungumza na team ambayo yuko hapo gallery Waweze kuchukua nambari yako Ok Aya, shukran sana Hazrat. She says that she has a brother uh, who has been actually, he said to have a heart problem and he says, uh, she says that he gets these spasms of pain in the chest and in the heart and uh, he cannot use his left side of the, of the arm. He cannot even lift his arm. Oh. So he's, she's asking uh, how can he, how can she help the brother? Oh, no, I would say that she, let her bring the brother to the camp. Yeah, he say, she says that uh, he's in the northeastern Kenya. Okay, can yeah. he come to Karen Hospital any time? Yeah. Because I think, you know, having a problem looks like he has to be investigated. Yes. Yeah, to mm -hmm. find out what is the problem, mm -hmm. why he can't lift the hand, mm -hmm. why the pain on the hand. Mm -hmm. So does he have a real heart problem or mm -hmm. is it something else? Yes. Are we missing? You know? Yeah, and she says he also gets spasms of sweat yes. all over so his we body. Have to, I don't know how old is he. Uh, that also matters and mm -hmm. of course I have to ask some questions, you yes. know, does he have any? Mm -hmm. So I think it will be better mm -hmm. if she can bring the brother to 
or Karen Hospital uh -huh. where we can do the test and uh -huh. find out what is happening uh -huh. and then treat accordingly. Okay, dadangu Hazrat Daktari <coughs> anasema pale da kaka yetu kama ataweza kusafirishwa kutoka Northeastern aje huko Nairobi umlete Karen Hospital the doctor will be ready to see to see him na vile vile tutaweza kuchukua namba yako na tumai umeweza kuiwacha I'll give your number to the doctor and I'll also give you uh, the doctor's number na utaweza kuwasiliana naye na utaweza kusaidiwa. Shukran sana kwa kuweza kupiga simu na kutegea Horizon TV. Daktari as we come to the end yes uh, you do have a heart to heart uh, foundation we in do. karen hospital yes. briefly very briefly okay. explain to us what it usually involves yeah heart to heart foundation <coughs> is a charity arm of karen hospital by which we do some fundraising programs to raise some fund to treat the underprivileged people especially children mm -hmm. you know basically you can say we are trying to reach the unreached okay. you know there are yes. a lot of people in our community mm -hmm. who don't have the facility for a good hospital or good doctors or that's whatever true. it is that's true so they just so the idea is to educate them mm -hmm. tell them that there is help available mm -hmm. and if they are financially poor mm -hmm. help them out okay. so the heart to heart is a charity organization by which we do free heart surgeries mm -hmm. or help them partially because nhif is there so yeah. nhif may give something mm -hmm. we also put some money mm -hmm. and treat them okay. so basically it is a it's a, it's a program to help the people who are underprivileged who doesn't have you know much help uh, so it it's a service to the humanity mm -hmm. let's put it that way especially more for children we okay. we fund more for children than adults okay so hiyo kuna heart to heart foundation ambayo Karen Hospital huwa ina run na daktari ameweza kutuelezea kwamba ni initiative ambayo wameweza kuitoa waweze kusaidia wale ambao hawawezi kufikiwa na matibabu ya hususan magonjwa ya moyo na sana sana wa wanashughulikia watoto of course kuna NHIF pale ambao wao inatusaidia na vile vile wao pia huweza kusaidia kuweka pesa kadhaa pale kuweza kushughulikia heart conditions za watoto bila shaka tutakuwa na kipindi kinginecho next week God willing after the camp tutaweza kujua vipi camp ilivyo kwenda na pia maswali mengi mengi yameweza kuingia tuweze kujibu maswali yenu hapo katika kipindi kijacho next week kwa sasa tunachukua sasa kipindi uh, wakati wetu wa la salama pengine niweze kuchukua tu some few comments pale kwenye Facebook Muhammad uh, Kamnana nafikiri kama sijakosea amesema very good destined for greatness thank you very much Rama Ramzi pale na Muhammad Ansari anasema mashallah looking good all of you shukran sana Zena Bansari kutoka India anasema watching from India very good i know the good doctor he is very good okay thank you so much Zainab Bansari uh, definitely tunajua daktari he is very good daktari thank, thank you very much for gracing Pleasure. our show definitely we should possibly have another program uh, possibly next week so that we can continue to answer the questions from our viewers na kwa kila mmoja ambaye ameweza kufanikisha show yetu ya leo shukran kwanza kwa kwa mtazamaji wetu mpendwa wa Horizon TV bila shaka bila Mwenyezi Mungu kutujalia wewe kuwa hapo basi na sisi tusinge kuwa hapa na kwanza pia kwa producer wangu Muhammad Shakombo ambaye ni ndiye mwelekezi wa kipindi hiki na msaidizi wake pale Saida Abud soundman wetu pale Muhammad Otoyo akisaidiwa na Nasir vile vile timu nzima kuanzia Uh, social media kule uh, Sadiq pamoja na uh, Hamed na vile vile technical operating team yetu kina Hashi na kina Sumeya na kina Biniamin shukran sana kwa kuweza kufanikisha kipindi cha leo kwangu mimi kwako maasalam mtazamaji Bismillahirrahmanirrahim amani juu yako mtazamaji wanakwetu wanatambua kama Maryam Wacharo unatizama the sobah show